Samantha Ray's fingers trembled slightly as she traced the faded map, its edges crumbling beneath her touch. The ancient parchment felt brittle, as fragile as her hope of ever finding her brother. Jasper had been missing for six months now, vanished without a trace while searching for the legendary heart of Zerzura, a ruby rumored to possess unearthly powers. Turning away from the map, her hazel eyes fell on the photo propped against the bookshelf, the reason she couldn't give up. Even in the wan light filtering through the dusty window of her Cairo apartment, Jasper's rakish grin seemed to sparkle up at her from the frame, his arms slung companionably around her shoulders. Happier times, before grief and desperation had carved new lines into both their faces. A dull ache blossomed beneath her ribs, an old wound that refused to heal. Losing their parents to a car crash a decade ago had left them both reeling, but they'd persevered, clinging to each other in the ensuing maelstrom of pain. Jasper had thrown himself into the role of her rock and protector with ferocious devotion, until the day he embarked on this mad, impossible quest and didn't come back. A sharp rap at the door jolted her from her reverie. Frowning, Samantha crossed the room, the floorboards creaking beneath her boots. She turned the lock and opened the door a crack, chain still in place. Jackson died. She exhaled sharply at seeing her brother's best friend on the dingy landing. What are you doing here? Nice to see you too, Sam. His mouth quirked sardonically as he held up a battered rucksack. Let me in. We need to talk. Samantha hesitated a beat before closing the door to slip the chain. She hadn't seen Jackson in months, not since their last bitter argument over how to handle Jasper's disappearance. The authorities had been worse than useless, and Jackson's underground contacts had only led to dead ends and danger. She reopened the door and he shouldered past her into the cramped flat, a hint of sandalwood and amber teasing her nostrils. Her stomach flipped traitorously at his nearness. Once upon a time, before Jasper vanished, there had been a spark between them, a tantalizing, what if that simmered in longing glances and accidental touches. Until grief and guilt snuffed it out, leaving only ashes of what might have been. Jackson dropped his bag on the faded sofa and turned to face her. Blue eyes, stormy. Jasper's trail hasn't gone cold. I found a lead. Samantha's heart stopped and then started again, pounding against her ribs. What? How? One. An old friend in Khartoum came through. A trader claims he saw Jasper three weeks ago, heading into the Nubian desert. He scrubbed a hand over his stubbled jaw. He was with a guide. A man named Malik. Okay. She swallowed hard. Then that's where we start. Jackson's brow furrowed. We? Sam, no. Eh, it's too dangerous. The desert is overrun with warlords and arms dealers, Wes. You think I care? She stepped forward, invading his space, tilting her chin defiantly. Tears stung her eyes, but she blinked them back. She'd cried an ocean already. Now was a time for action. He's my brother, Jackson. I'm going, with or without you. Emotions warred across his striking face. Fear, frustration, and a fierce protectiveness that secretly thrilled her even as it chafed. Then, with a muttered curse, he looked away. Fine, Dut. We leave at dawn. He shouldered past her again, heading for the door. Pausing on the threshold, he glanced back, gaze searing. But... If anything happens to you out there, he didn't finish the thought, just shook his head and walked out, leaving Samantha alone with the specters of her grief and the fragile ember of hope kindling in her chest. At dawn, they met at the airfield, the pink and gold sky casting an otherworldly glow over the dunes beyond. Jackson was already waiting by the tiny, rickety prop plane, its engine sputtering to life under the pilot's ministrations. They said little as they boarded, strapping themselves in on opposite benches, surrounded by crates of supplies. The plane lurched and swayed as they took off, buffeted by desert gusts. Samantha gripped the edge of her seat, stomach churning. The weather from the turbulence or the proximity to Jackson, she couldn't say. Hours passed, the Sahara unfolding in an endless sea of undulating sand beneath them. Jackson studied maps 
his dark brows drawn together in concentration. Samantha alternated between fitful dozing and watching him, emotions roiling. We'll find him, Sam, he said suddenly, startling her from her reverie. His blue eyes were softer than she'd seen in months when they met hers. I promise. Before she could respond, the plane gave a violent shudder, tipping sickeningly to one side. Shouting erupted from the cockpit, and acrid smoke began filling the cabin. They were going down. In the ensuing chaos of screeching metal, choking fumes and tumbling crates, Jackson somehow crossed the lurching space between them. He threw his body over hers, shielding her, as the desert rushed up to meet them and the world exploded into fire and darkness. When Samantha awoke, it was to searing sun, scorching sand, and a firestorm of pain. The plane was a twisted wreck a few dunes away, black smoke coiling into the shimmering sky. She lay half buried in the sand and a few feet away. Jackson! She scrambled to his prone form, ignoring the white-hot daggers shooting through her left arm and ribs. Frantically, she rolled him over, pressing trembling fingers to his neck. At the steady thrum of his pulse, she nearly wept with relief. She shook him gently, then harder. Jackson, wake up. Please. With a low groan, his eyes fluttered open, glassy and unfocused. A gash marred his forehead, blood painting half his face in macabre streaks. Sam? What? Then memory struck and he jolted upright, hands immediately going to her shoulders as his gaze raked over her. Are you hurt? God, Sam. I'm okay, she managed, though it came out as more of a sob. She curled her fingers into his shirt, sudden tears blurring her vision. She'd almost lost him. Just like Jasper. Just like her parents. Abruptly, she crashed her mouth to his in a bruising, desperate kiss. He froze for a heartbeat before responding with a groan, hands moving to cradle her jaw, slanting his lips over hers again and again. It was graceless, frantic, a messy tangle of lips and teeth and tongues. A dam bursting, spilling out the longing, the unspoken feelings, the fears. Every repressed emotion pouring out in a starburst of heat and shuddering sighs. When they finally broke apart, chests heaving, an entire conversation passed between their locked gazes. No more pretending. No more holding back. Not when every moment could be their last. Wetting cracked lips, Samantha inhaled shakily. We need to move. Find shelter before nightfall. And then, then, we'll find him, Jackson rasped, resolute as he climbed unsteadily to his feet, pulling her with him. Always steadfast, always her port in the storm. We'll bring your brother home. Together. He laced his fingers through hers, palm calloused and warm and strong. A promise and a lifeline. With one last look at the smoldering wreckage, they turned and limped off into the shimmering, shifting sands. Their quest, and something far more profound, had only just begun. The sun beat down mercilessly as Samantha and Jackson trudged through the endless sea of dunes, the wreckage of the plane long since vanished behind undulating crests of sand. Each step was a Herculean effort, their battered bodies screaming in protest, but they pressed on, hands clasped, drawing strength from each other. As the hours dragged by and the sky bled from blue to burnished gold, Samantha's mind wandered, memories floating to the surface like flotsam on a turbulent sea. Jasper, gap-toothed and laughing, hoisting her onto his shoulders when she was five. Jasper, eyes ringed in shadows, pressing a kiss to her forehead before shouldering his pack and walking out the door, never to return. Grief rose like a cresting wave, threatening to pull her under. A strangled sob escaped her parched throat, and Jackson's grip tightened, anchoring her. We'll find him, Sam, he rasped, voice hoarse from thirst and emotion. I swear it. She could only nod, blinking back tears that she couldn't afford to shed. Not now, when every drop of moisture was precious. Just when Samantha was certain her legs would give out, Jackson stopped short, pointing with his free hand. There. Shelter. Squinting against the glare, she made out a rocky outcropping jutting from the base of a large dune, offering a sliver of blessed shade. 
They half stumbled, half slid down the shifting sand, collapsing against the sun-warmed stone. Jackson fumbled with his pack, producing a dented canteen. He uncapped it and pressed it to her lips, urging her to drink. The tepid water was ambrosia on her sandpaper tongue, but she pulled back after a few sips, pushing it towards him. You too. We have to stay strong. For Jasper. His Adam's apple bobbed as he drank, and Samantha found her gaze drawn to the strong column of his throat, to the bead of sweat tracing a path down his tanned skin. Heat that had nothing to do with the desert unfurled in her belly. As if sensing her thoughts, Jackson lowered the canteen, blue eyes darkening as they met hers. Slowly, deliberately, he reached out to cradle her cheek, fingers gentle on her abraded skin. Samantha? Just her name, but it held a world of longing, of unspoken promises. She turned her face into his palm, lips grazing his calluses, and his breath hitched. I tried to stay away, he said hoarsely. Tried to do the right thing. But almost losing you today, it made me realize. He swallowed hard, vulnerability etched into every line of his rugged face. I love you, Sam. I have for years. I know the timing is all wrong, but wait. She cut him off with a kiss, fierce and hungry, pouring all her desperation, her love, her need into the crush of lips and slide of tongues. He responded with a groan, hands moving to her hips, pulling her astride his lap, heedless of their injuries. They clung to each other, mouths fused, hearts pounding in sync, as the last of the sun's rays painted the sand gold and shadows stretched long across the dunes. And for a snatched moment, cocooned in their small oasis, the rest of the world fell away. The danger, the uncertainty, the grief. All that existed was the heat between them. The life-affirming press of skin against skin. The glide of hands napping scars and curves and planes. It was Jackson who finally pulled back, breath ragged, resting his forehead against hers. As much as I want you, this isn't the time or place. His lips quirked wryly. When I make love to you, I want a bed, not a boulder digging into my backside. Despite everything, a laugh bubbled up Samantha's throat, bright and rusty from disuse. Who knew you were such a romantic? His expression sobered, and he brushed a tendril of hair from her sand-streaked cheek. For you, always. The words wrapped around her heart like a caress, and she had to blink back a fresh onslaught of tears. How had she gotten so lucky to have this man by her side, steady and true? As if in answer, the universe chose that moment to remind them just how precarious their situation was. From the other side of the dune came the unmistakable sound of an engine, growing louder by the second. They sprang apart, instantly on alert, reaching for the weapons they'd salvaged from the wreckage. Jackson pushed Samantha behind him, ignoring her hissed protest as he edged to the corner of the outcropping and peered around, body coiled tight as a bowstring. It's a jeep, he murmured, barely audible over the growl of the approaching vehicle. Two men inside, heavily armed. Samantha's heart stopped and then started again, pounding against her ribs like a caged bird. Jasper's warning echoed in her head, his last words before he vanished. Trust no one, little sister. There are snakes in every garden. None dare win any way. The jeep drew closer, kicking up plumes of sand, engine snarling like a feral beast. As it crested the dune above them, sunlight glinted off the passenger's binoculars as he scanned the area. Looking for the downed plane, or survivors. Damn it, Jackson breathed, something like dread in his voice. That's Malik. Jasper's guide. Samantha's stomach turned to ice, even as a wild, desperate hope kindled in her chest. If Malik was here, alive, then maybe, just maybe, we have to talk to him. She started forward, but Jackson's arm shot out, barring her path. No, she went on and so. It's too risky. She glared at him, hazel eyes flashing. He might know where Jasper is. Jackson shook his head, mouth set in a grim line. Think, Sam. Jasper's been missing for months. If Malik was really his friend, why didn't he report the disappearance? 
Come to us for help. Doubt crept in, insidious and cold, but Samantha shook it off. You don't know. I know we can't take the chance. Jackson's voice was low, urgent, pleading. We're outnumbered and outgunned. We need to stay hidden until they move on, then reassess. Every instinct screamed at her to argue, but one look at the cold determination in Jackson's eyes, the protective set of his jaw, and the fight drained out of her. He was right. So, if they revealed themselves now, they could be walking into a trap, and then they'd be no good to Jasper or each other. Wordlessly, she allowed Jackson to pull her flush against the crumbling stone wall, both hardly daring to breathe as the jeep prowled closer. Sand sprayed as it skidded to a stop, mere yards from their hiding place, and boots crunched on the gritty earth, making Samantha's skin crawl. Low voices drifted on the desert wind. Could have survived. Americans? Too nosy. Find them. No witnesses. Samantha bit her lip hard enough to draw blood, heart hammering as she strained to catch every word. Jackson's arm tightened around her waist, a band of steel anchoring her as his breath stirred the hair at her nape. She could feel the rigid tension in every line of his body, muscles coiled to strike. An eternity passed, the voices growing louder, and then fading as the men searched the area, circling ever closer to the outcropping. Samantha's lungs burned, spots dancing before her eyes, but she didn't dare exhale. Just when she thought she might scream from the unbearable tension, the passenger barked an order in Arabic and the boots receded, crunching back to the jeep. Doors slammed, the engine roared to life, and then, blessedly, the sound began to fade, the vehicle speeding off in a spray of sand and grit. It was a long moment before either Samantha or Jackson moved, as if not quite trusting their luck. Finally, he released her, stepping back to run a shaking hand through his hair. That was too close, he muttered, voice gravelly. He shot her a look that was equal parts exasperation and reluctant admiration. You're going to be the death of me, woman. Despite the residual fear coursing through her veins, Samantha managed a weak smile. But what a way to go, he huffed a laugh, tugging her into his arms, and she went willingly, suddenly, boneless. They stood like that, holding each other up as the adrenaline slowly ebbed and the magnitude of what they'd overheard sank in. They were looking for us, she whispered into his chest. Why? What don't we know? Jackson sighed, his chin resting atop her head. I don't know, but I intend to find out. He pulled back, tipping her chin up to meet his gaze, deadly serious. I meant what I said. We're in this together, no matter where it leads. Samantha swallowed hard, emotions welling up, clogging her throat. Jasper was still out there somewhere, in the clutches of an unknown enemy. They were stranded in the middle of the desert, injured and hunted. The odds were stacked against them at every turn. As the sun sank below the horizon and the first stars winked to life in the inky sky, they settled back against the protective curve of the rock, limbs entangled, hearts beating as one. Dawn broke over the dunes in a blaze of amber and gold, painting the endless expanse of sand in fiery hues. Samantha blinked awake, limbs stiff and heavy, momentarily disoriented. Then the events of the previous day came rushing back. The crash, the arduous trek, the close call with Malik and his men. Jackson's fervent declaration and the soul-searing kiss they'd shared. She sat up gingerly, wincing as her battered muscles protested. A few feet away, Jackson was already awake, studying the maps they'd salvaged from the wreckage, brow furrowed in concentration. As if sensing her gaze, he glanced up, blue eyes softening. Morning, dot. Morning, she rasped, throat dry and scratchy. She accepted the canteen he offered, taking a judicious sip. Any revelations in the night? His mouth quirked wryly. Besides the fact that I'm head over heels for my best friend's sister? Ahar's startled laugh, his expression sobered. I've been trying to retrace Jasper's steps, based on his last known whereabouts. If we can find the ruins he was searching for, we might be able to pick up his trail. Samantha nodded, hope and trepidation warring in her chest. 
Every minute that ticked by was another minute, Jasper was out there, alone, and in danger. But charging him blind would only put them all at risk. They needed a plan. A direction. A lifeline to cling to in this vast, merciless desert. She scooted closer to Jackson, peering at the map spread across his knees. Okay, walk me through it. For the next hour, they pored over the faded parchment and crumbling texts, heads bent together, voices low and urgent. Ancient myths and half-forgotten legends swirled through Samantha's mind, whispers of a lost oasis, a fabled temple, a stone said to grant the heart's desire. The heart of Zerzura. The key everything. There, Jackson said suddenly, stabbing a finger at a spot on the map. The oasis of Fayum. If the stories are true, that's where the temple was built. Where the heart is hidden. Samantha's pulse quickened, adrenaline humming through her veins. How far? Two days walk, give or take. Jackson's jaw clenched, a muscle ticking in his cheek. Through the Katara Depression, a chill skittered down Samantha's spine. The Katara Depression, a vast, desolate basin, one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. Searing heat, shifting sands, and an eerie, palpable sense of malevolence that clung to the place like a shroud. Every instinct screamed at her to turn back, to find another way. But then Jasper's face swam before her eyes, weary and stubbled, lines of strain bracketing his mouth. He would walk through hell for her, without hesitation. She could do no less for him. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha met Jackson's gaze, resolve crystallizing in her heart. Then that's where we're going. His eyes searched her face for a long moment, a silent conversation passing between them. Then he nodded once, sharply, and began gathering up the maps. We'll need to find water first. The depression will suck us dry in hours. They packed up their meager supplies and set off across the dunes, the rising sun at their backs. The heat was a living, breathing thing, pressing down on them like a smothering weight, leaching the moisture from their bodies with every labored step. But they pressed on, leaning on each other when their strength faltered, urging each other forward with words of encouragement and gentle touches. The bond between them, tempered in the crucible of adversity, only grew stronger, a shining thread of hope amidst the desolation. As the sun reached its zenith, they crested a towering dune and stopped short, an unvoiced prayer of relief on their cracked lips. There, nestled in the hollow between two sandy peaks, was a small, shimmering pool of water, an impossible oasis in the middle of the barren wasteland. They half stumbled, half slid down the shifting sand, dropping to their knees at the edge of the pool. The water was warm and slightly brackish, but to Samantha it tasted like the nectar of the gods. She drank deeply, feeling it soothe her parched throat and ease the pounding in her temples. Beside her, Jackson did the same, a low groan of relief escaping him as he splashed water over his face and neck. Droplets clung to his lashes, tracked rivulets through the grime on his cheeks, and Samantha found herself transfixed by the play of light over his wet skin. As if drawn by an invisible force, she reached out to trace the line of his jaw, fingertips rasping over stubble. He went still beneath her touch, eyes darkening as they met hers. Sam. His voice was a rusted whisper. A plea, and a warning rolled into one. Shh. She leaned in slowly, giving him time to pull away. He didn't. We might not get another chance. Then her lips were on his, a soft brush that quickly ignited into something hungry and desperate. He responded with a low growl, hands coming up to cradle her face, angling her head to deepen the kiss. They lost themselves in each other, the rest of the world falling away, until all that existed was the slide of lips and tongues, the fevered press of skin against skin, the ragged pant of breath in the shimmering heat. It was a stolen moment of solace, of connection, of life-affirming need in the heart of the unforgiving desert. A memory to cling to in the dark times ahead. As they reluctantly broke apart, foreheads touching, chests heaving, Samantha felt a swell of something too profound for words crest beneath her ribs. More than desire, 
more than determination. Faith. Drawing in a shuddering breath, she pulled back to meet Jackson's gaze, a wealth of understanding passing between them in that charged, weighted moment. Together, they stepped forward into the unknown, hearts armored in hope, resolve glinting like steel beneath their skin. The Katara Depression was a stark, alien landscape, a seemingly endless expanse of salt pans and shifting dunes that stretched as far as the eye could see. The air shimmered with heat, distorting the horizon into a wavy mirage that played tricks on the eyes and mind. Samantha and Jackson trudged through the loose sand, each step an effort of will, their meager supplies dwindling with every passing hour. The sun beat down mercilessly, baking the moisture from their skin, searing their eyes behind their makeshift masks. But they didn't falter, didn't waver. They had come too far, sacrificed too much to turn back now. Jasper was out there somewhere, waiting for them. The heart of Zerzura was waiting, a mythical promise whispering on the arid wind. And so they pressed on, leaning into each other when their strength flagged, whispering words of encouragement and faith when despair threatened to overwhelm them. The bond between them, forged in the crucible of shared trials and tempered by the heat of newfound love, was a lifeline, a shining thread of hope amidst the desolation. On the third day, as the sun dipped towards the western horizon, painting the sky in lurid streaks of orange and red, they saw it, a glint of something man-made breaking the monotony of the dunes. Ruins, dot. Ancient stone, weathered and worn, jutting from the sand like the bones of a long-dead leviathan. Samantha's heart leapt into her throat, a dizzying mix of excitement and trepidation. They were close. So close to the answers they sought, to the brother she'd move heaven and earth to save. But as they drew nearer, picking their way through the crumbling remains of a once great temple, a prickle of unease skittered down her spine. The ruins were too quiet, too still. No sign of Jasper, no indication that anyone had passed this way in centuries. Only the whisper of the wind through the broken columns and the shifting hiss of sand over stone. Then, from the shadows of the central chamber, a figure emerged. Tall and lean, swathed in desert robes, face obscured by a dark scarf. Malik? Dot, guy. Samantha's hand flew to the knife at her belt, fingers curling around the hilt as Jackson stepped instinctively in front of her, shielding her with his body. Where's Jasper? Her voice rang out, harsh and demanding, echoing off the ancient walls. What have you done with my brother? Malik chuckled, a low, menacing sound that sent chills racing down her spine. He reached up, slowly, deliberately, and tugged the scarf down, revealing a face weathered and lined by the desert sun, and a sneer that spoke of cruelty and malice. Jasper? He spat the name like a curse. That fool never made it this far. He trusted too easily asked too many questions. He had to be, removed from the equation. Grief and rage tore through Samantha like a physical blow, staggering in their intensity. She surged forward, knife flashing in the dying light, a scream of denial and anguish ripping from her throat. But Jackson was faster, catching her around the waist, holding her back even as she fought and clawed like a wild thing. He's lying, Sam. He's trying to bait you, throw you off balance. Jasper's alive. He has to be. The certainty in his voice, the ironclad faith, pierced the red haze of her fury, allowing a single shaft of reason to penetrate the maelstrom of her emotions. She went limp in his arms, chest heaving, hot tears streaming down her cheeks. Malik watched the exchange with cold, reptilian eyes, a predator assessing his prey. Touching, he sneered. But, futile. You're too late. The heart is mine. And soon its power will be unleashed upon the world, ushering in a new age of chaos and destruction. No. Samantha shook her head, jaw clenched in grim determination. We won't let that happen. We'll stop you, whatever it takes. Malik threw back his head and laughed, a harsh grating sound that echoed off the crumbling stone. You? A mere girl and her love-struck lapdog? 
You have no idea what you're up against. The forces I serve are ancient and powerful beyond your wildest imaginings. He reached into his robes and withdrew a small, blood-red stone that pulsed with an inner light, casting an eerie glow over his angular features. The heart of Zerzura, the source of all their trials and tribulations, the key to a power beyond reckoning. Samantha's breath caught, her eyes riveted to the gem. So small, so innocuous, and yet she could feel the thrum of its power from across the chamber, a siren song that called to the deepest, darkest parts of her soul. Malik held it aloft, a triumphant sneer twisting his lips. Behold, the heart, the conduit of the ancients, the key to unlocking the very fabric of reality. With this I will remake the world in my image. I will be a god among men. No, tame. Jackson's voice was low, dangerous. You'll be a madman drunk on power, sowing chaos and destruction wherever you go. We won't let you do this. Quick as a snake he drew his pistol from its holster and leveled it at Malik's chest. Give us the heart. Now, Jaden. Malik's eyes glittered with malice. You fool. You think you can stop me with mere bullets? The heart protects its chosen. Witness true power. He clenched his fist around the stone and a shockwave of energy blasted outward, slamming into Jackson and sending him flying. He crashed into a pillar and crumpled to the ground, motionless. No! Samantha's scream tore from her throat, raw and anguished. She started towards him, but Malik's mocking laughter stopped her in her tracks. Ah, young love. He shook his head in mock pity. So fragile. So easily shattered. Just like your precious brother. Rage, white hot and searing, surged through Samantha's veins. This monster had taken everything from her. Her brother, her love, her hope for the future. No more. With a wordless cry of fury, she launched herself at Malik, knife flashing in the crimson light of the heart. He met her with a blow that sent sparks dancing across her vision, but she barely felt it, lost in a haze of grief and vengeance. They traded blows across the chamber, ducking and weaving amidst the broken columns and rubble. Malik was fast, preternaturally so, the heart lending him speed and strength beyond the mortal ken. But Samantha was fueled by something just as powerful. Love. Love for Jasper, for Jackson, for the life they should have had. A life stolen by the machinations of a madman. She poured every ounce of that love, that rage, that sorrow into her onslaught, raining down blows with a savagery she hadn't known she possessed. And slowly, impossibly, she began to gain ground. Malik's sneer faltered, replaced by a flicker of uncertainty. He redoubled his attacks, the heart pulsing wildly in his grip, but Samantha met him at every turn, a whirling dervish of steel and determination. Impossible, he hissed, retreating before her relentless advance. You're just a girl. You have no power here. You're wrong. Samantha's voice was steady, suffused with a calm certainty that came from the very depths of her soul. I have the power of love. The power of family. The power of hope. And that's something you'll never understand. With a final mighty cry, she lunged forward, plunging her knife into Malik's chest, piercing the heart where it nestled against his black, withered soul. The scream that tore from his throat was inhuman, a sound of rage and agony and thwarted ambition. The heart pulsed once, twice, then burst in a shower of crimson shards, raining down around them like the petals of a shattered rose. Malik collapsed, a marionette with its strings cut, and moved no more. For a long crystalline moment, Samantha stood over him, chest heaving, tears streaming down her face. It was over. The nightmare was finally over. Then a low groan shattered her reverie, and she whirled to see Jackson stirring, pushing himself up on his elbows amidst the rubble. Sam? Jackson! She flew to his side, dropping to her knees and throwing her arms around him, heedless of his injuries. He grunted in pain but pulled her closer, 
hands fisting in her shirt. They clung to each other amidst the ruins of their battleground, the weight of all they'd endured, all they'd lost, all they'd gained crashing over them in a tidal wave of emotion. Tears mingled as they rained desperate kisses over each other's faces, whispered words of love and reassurance passing between them like prayers. I thought I'd lost you, Samantha choked out, forehead pressed against his. I thought. Never. Jackson's voice was fierce, his grip on her tightening. I'll always come back to you, Sam. Always. A shadow fell over them, and they looked up to see a figure staggering into the chamber, silhouetted against the setting sun. Did Asper? Battered, bruised, but alive, his eyes widening as he took in the scene before him. The shattered heart, Malik's prone form, his sister, and his best friend locked in a desperate embrace. Sam? His voice cracked on her name, disbelief and joy warring on his haggard face. Jackson? What? How? Wait. Samantha was on her feet in an instant, flying across the chamber to crash into her brother's arms, a fresh wave of tears coursing down her cheeks. He caught her with a grunt of surprise, staggering back a step, then wrapped her in a bone-crushing hug, years of love and worry and grief pouring out of him in a shuddering sigh. You found me, he murmured into her hair, voice thick with emotion. You? Saved me. Always, Samantha whispered fiercely. I'll always find you, Jasper. No matter what. Jackson limped over to join them, clasping Jasper's hand in a grip that spoke volumes. No words were needed. The bond between them, tempered by fire and blood and love, was unbreakable. As one, they turned to face the setting sun, the light of a new day painting the sands in shades of gold and promise. The future stretched before them, uncertain but alive with possibility. They had endured the crucible, had walked through fire and emerged on the other side, scarred but whole. Stronger. Da. United. Diet. The desert had tested them, had stripped them down to their very cores and forced them to confront their deepest fears, their darkest demons. But in the end, the love between them had proven stronger than any ancient power, any twisted ambition. In the end, they had triumphed. Together. And as they set out across the shifting sands, the ruins of the temple receding behind them like a half-remembered dream, Samantha knew that whatever trials lay ahead, whatever storms they would weather, they would face them as one. For they had found the true heart, not a relic of stone and myth but the unbreakable bonds of love and family. And that was a power that could never be shattered.